Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about a newly discovered pulsar slash neutron star that seems to be the record holder for the fastest orbit around its partner. This is an object known as IGR J1706 and today we're going to discuss it in a little bit more detail and reconstruct it right here in Universe Sandbox. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So when it comes to neutron stars, uh, we've discovered uh, quite a few, although not too many out there. And most of the time when we actually discover the ones that are the, the brightest or have the most emissions, they normally possess some sort of a partner. In this particular case, when we're actually are looking at the object known as uh, IGR J170626143, it is essentially a pulsar or neutron star depending on how you're actually seeing them from which angle it appears, um, that actually has a partner and it orbits this partner at a ridiculously uh, record holding speed or I guess time. Um, so we discovered that they orbit around each other in about 38 minutes. In other words, let's just pick an object. Let's, let's pick something really small like uh, maybe Proxima Centauri, which is the closest star to us and place it in an orbit where it would most likely take around the same time. And in this situation, this is actually where Proxima Centauri would be located. It's uh, essentially right here in comparison to this pulsar. And interestingly, um, this object is only at a distance of approximately, let's just actually double check this here, um, 320,000 kilometers, which is actually closer to uh, a closer in distance than Earth is to the moon. So in other words, uh, if this was Earth and this is the moon, this is kind of what the orbit would look like. And now if I actually let the simulation run, you'll notice something happening relatively quickly. And this something is due to extremely high tidal effects coming from the pulsar. Uh, this star will most likely start kind of sort of falling apart. Now, can, you can actually maybe see it happen already. Um, but when we discover this pulsar, actually I should probably change the name here because this is not the real name. Here we go, IGR J170626143. So when we discover this pulsar, we realize that it does seem to have a partner that's kind of stable. It doesn't seem to actually throw off a lot of material toward the pulsar. And uh, this only means one thing that the object orbiting this pulsar is not a typical star. As a matter of fact, it's most likely a remnant star. And in this case, it's very likely to be a white dwarf. Now, this is actually where things get a little bit interesting. So as you can see here, uh, this pulsar is actually going to start accreting all of this material and eventually we'll actually have an accretion disk around it that will orbit, well, here's actually a simulation directly from NASA. It will orbit directly around pulsar and will spin super, super fast. And this is actually what's happening right now as well. Because of this, uh, it generates quite a tremendous amount of energy, uh, a lot of different types of lights, including X-ray. Um, and uh, this X-ray radiation is actually quite easy for us to detect. Uh, and this is what made us realize that there was a pulsar in this particular location. And it was actually detected from the International Space Station from a very, very sensitive device that they have on ISS that allows us to detect such events in such objects. And so what is really cool about this object is that it actually is doing the same to its white dwarf partner. Even though the white dwarf that it's, uh, it has an orbit, so actually let's replace this star with a white dwarf. So we're gonna take this and put a white dwarf, like for example, um, Sirius B, which is the closest white dwarf to us, in an orbit around it, around uh, maybe the same sort of area, somewhere right here basically have it orbit around the pulsar now. And so this white dwarf, which I guess in this case would be called IGR J170062B, um, is kind of actually losing some of its material as well. Even though it's more dense than a typical star, it is still actually losing some of its um, outer shell. And this stuff is basically being deposited onto the the pulsar that is essentially uh, creating a, an accretion disk around itself that at some point will reach what's known as a critical mass. And when this critical mass is reached, 
well, actually, this is kind of interesting that it just happened on the screen here as well. It's actually going to produce a really, really large explosion, uh, typically known as a nova. And we're going to try to simulate this uh, by basically exploding this right now. And uh, this explosion is going to generate a very, very bright event in the skies. Okay, this explosion actually didn't generate as much brightness as I, as I hoped. So let's try it again. Let's, let's see if we can do it again by essentially maybe exploding the star itself actually uh, to try to simulate this nova event so it's not a supernova it is however a very very bright explosion uh equivalent to about 150 to possibly a thousand megaton in power which is basically like a really 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 large nuclear bomb and this explosion uh will be visible from earth most likely for just a little bit until it so sort of disappears and uh, returns back to where it was before, which would be a uh, white dwarf and a pulsar just orbiting around each other without any accretion disks. Now, these nova events are very, very common uh, around white dwarfs usually, but not as common around pulsars. In case of a pulsar, though, the, the actual nova is going to be much, much, much brighter, much more powerful, and will most likely end up in uh, creating such a huge explosion that it might end up actually pushing the white dwarf away from itself and anything else in its orbit will probably kind of sort of retrieve uh, retreat into the outer uh, regions of the star system kind of like what you see happening here a lot of things are just kind of flying away from this nova that was just uh, detonated and unfortunately except for the fact that uh, we discovered this this is the record holder for the fastest orbit and knowing that it's most likely going to create Nova sometime in the future, or probably not in our lifetime, we don't really know much else about this object just yet, because it was just recently discovered. It might still surprise us with some other interesting results and discoveries, so we might even find a planet or two around these two binary objects. But for now, that's kind of all we know about them. And until then, until we discover something new, I'm going to say goodbye to you, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, and... Do consider supporting this channel on Patreon if you'd like to learn more about space. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.